motion for a motion to approve the agenda tonight. So moved. Second. Changes or additions? I will, I will note that we will need a, a brief executive session for personnel matters. All right, something else. All those in favor of approving the agenda, please say aye. 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 Opposed? For a motion to approve the minutes from April 11. So moved. Second. Questions, corrections, discussion on those minutes? Right, hearing none, all those in favor of approving, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right, so we have a student presentation tonight, Deb. We, we do have a presentation tonight. Um, good evening, board. Um, welcome to our school. Um, we had hoped that our uh, two members of our K-1 looping team were going to present. Unfortunately, one member, Jared Daniel, went home ill this afternoon. So Tian is on her own. Um, Tian has been, we were just trying to figure out 26 or 27 years she has worked for Fairhaven grade school. Uh, started as an instructional assistant and she was our triple E teacher and now she's a member of our K-1 looping team which has four teachers. This year Tian is in kindergarten with Jared and she's going to share a video and some work that they've been collaboratively doing with their kindergartners this year. So Tian, it's all yours and we'll get out of the way because I know you have a video. Well I was going to stand at least tell them what it was about sure. for us real quick. And sorry, I'm very good at speaking in front of children, but in front of adults, it's very difficult for me. <laughs> it's fun. But as kindergarten teachers, we wanted to show the children that what they do really matters and they can make a change in this world. So we combined our social studies unit with the community members and economics, which for kindergarten is wants and needs and knowing the difference between the two, as well as our science unit with animals and collaborate, collaborated with the money and math piece with counting and sorting money, ones, fives, and tens, and counting up to tens, and then counting by tens throughout. And we combined those all together with this project. And the students had to write as well. So we combined everything in this project and kind of brought samples of these as well for everyone to take one and pass around. They had to write letters to the community and ask them to donate a dollar to help the Humane Society in Rome. So they had to do all the research, read, and then write the letters, practice how to write sentences as well, and write on lines, and then we sent it all out. And through that, we had, I mean, it was amazing what came about. We were able to talk with an actual, uh, our illustrator of a new book, and she sent us pictures of one of the dog from the book. We connected with the Rutland Humane Society, and they were able to come and visit and show us videos of their location and everything that the kids would, the, dogs and cats would need, sorry, because I said I'll get nervous as I go on. Um, <laughs> and it just was amazing. And the kids were so proud of themselves afterwards. And we also used Seesaw to record some of their voices about their feelings afterwards as well. And we made a little video with Lisa Cacciatore's help to show you, and we sent it out to the parents as well. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. Tell us how you like the project to save money for the dogs and cats for the Rutland Humane Society and how you felt about your work when you were all done. I really liked it and when we get food for the cats and dogs, we can help them get their owners. Bye. I hope they get more money because I love Sophie. Because they 
because somebody saved her, and I love her because I hope the Humane Society gets more families and pets so they can get more money to help animals. I like how I read to the cats and dogs. money to help the cats and dogs and that's I love and it's awesome doing it. I do it the money for the dogs and cats. I liked counting the money and I like the project a lot. I feel happy about this work and I'm glad that I counted the money and saved for the dogs. That was my favorite part. I, I love Shoshi. I like how he's the mayor. Got 366. I got more. Only to bring in one dollar for each kid. And we were able to raise 371, um, which was the final one. The, when the kids recorded themselves, it was 366. And then someone gave $5 more. It was. <laughs> Thank you for having me. All right, moving on to public comments. I see anyone here in person. I'm attending virtually who has a public comment. So please unmute and identify yourself. No public comment this evening. Moving on to committees. First start the buildings and grounds. And Sure, well, Pete was going to paste the chair. Oh. I gave him my notes. Like, okay. <laughs> um, on the middle school update, we're close to sheetrock. Um, project is still on schedule. The doors are running a little bit late, and the door frames need to be put up for the sheetrock. Usually, um, we're waiting for that. Um, there's some water damage in the nurse's office that we're taking care of. Um, on the outside, we're going to do some drainage and um, waterproof the foundation to take care of that. So when we finish the nurse's office, we don't have water in there again. Um, this is okay. oh, update the new gym space. Um, the basketball hoop's been on the end wall, and we're probably going to have a climbing wall there. So that's coming along good. Um, there's going to be two um, volleyball courts. They won't be quite regulation, but almost. And then um, boring's been picked out. It's cheerful and colorful, I've been told. And then um, the elevator project, we haven't learned too much more on it. We're still getting prices on that and working on 
expect the streamlined fleet going over to the cafeteria and figuring out where we're going to That's it. Let's say there's a question. The nurse's office you mentioned, that's the student feeding store nurse's office on the corridor into the section? Yeah. From the courtyard side. We get to a point where we can maybe go in and see the space at some point in the near future. If hopefully next meeting. All right. Any other uh, questions for Peter and buildings and grounds? Right here. Uh, now moving to policy. Tanya online. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so we we reviewed policy E1, the family and parental involvement, and didn't make any changes to that to that policy. We have two we'd like to warn tonight. We want to warn, or I, I want to make a motion to warn E20, um, community use of facilities. And that's a new policy that we would implement July 1st, 2022, which is five years. Second. I guess, yeah, there was an agreement not to have a policy in place until five years from the merger or not to have, um, not to have this in place until five years, but policies have been already in place and being in use in the building. So this will just be an overarching um, policy. Tony, you had a, a motion to warn to that? Warn, yeah, to warn E20. And you seconded E20? Yeah. Uh, is there any questions or discussion on policy E20? Yeah, which policy E20? Do you really get it? Part of the top, well, part of the policy meeting. Right. Oh, there's some policy that were happening. Yeah. So, 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 right? Yeah, those were the ones that were born last time. Has a lot changed in it? No, we don't have an existing policy oh. because you are under the, remember what the articles of agreement, um, each of the, like for each of the schools, we just kept those existing policies. But this is very um, broad. Um, but we have been using an internal set of procedures. That's, you know, and a so lot of that her, stuff around school yeah. stemmed from school security concerns. And, you know, but like, with current practice, nothing really changes. This just gets us a policy, and we'll be using 90% of the actual procedures we're doing now. So there's not a lot of change, it just formalizes. And it was four years, Brooke, or five? We, four five. years after the merger, we had to stay with the existing yeah. um, school policies, which some had some, some didn't, didn't have. Them. Yeah. So there'll be a print version of this policy for the board to review prior to adopting it Correct. next meeting? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions for Peter and Buildings and Grants? Any other questions? Right, hearing nothing, all those in favor of approving to warn policy 20 community use facilities, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, Tanya, back to you. Yep. Okay, so we would like to warn policy D31, which is the library media library material selection policy. And also encourage the board to read this as it's a new policy before the next meeting for some discussion, hopefully the next meeting. But um, what we liked, we liked what we saw so far on the, in the policy on the committee. Second. What's this one? What's right here? It's on the agenda policy P1 library media P1. materials were P31. P31. I thought we wanted to have it. No. No. Oh, that's so. <laughs> so this is something we came up with, or was it like a template? No. It's something we came up with based on the national template. The FBA is currently revising it, but it's similar. So we may have to revise it again next year. So 
now the time that short cut concerns. I mean, it's policy, or should we wait for it to be born and then next meeting we adopt it or try to adopt it? Because I have a concern. concern. Sure, go ahead. Well, I just, it comes down to the responsibility for selection. And this is 3A, and it says on this that the Slate Valley Union School Board is legally responsible for the resources of the school library. Slate values and school board, however, delegates responsibility for the selection of the learning resources to the certified school library teacher employed by the school district. I don't think we ought to give up that responsibility. I think we ought to have that responsibility as a board. Is what books are used you're, in our, our you're gonna select every I mean, you will review well, no, every well, book order? No, well, we'll be responsible for books are in here in case there's any questions, I think, from parent training. But we'll get the input from the library people as to what we ought, they ought to put in. But at some point where a parent might question that, we would have the authority to act on that. We have look at it. What's the current policy state? That's part of the problem. <laughs> we used to. Well, think about Years it. Years ago, we high school used to That was my concern. So, well, there's a 47 page manual of procedures that that follows this up. No, but I think that it. we are still responsible. Correct. Not the way this reads. Yeah, yeah, the board is legally always, responsible yeah. for the resources in the school <clears throat> library, but we are not going to approve every book order oh, no. that the library makes. That's all that that's saying. It's no, saying that they oh, still the make the book order. The, set, the second sentence? Yeah, um, Dele um, we're delegating so. the responsibility of selecting them, going through, picking the ones that they're gonna have in the library to the school librarian. So the school librarian basically does that purchasing. Right, yeah. and then what happens is if a parent or guardian or community member has a problem with it, they would, I would assume, first go to the library and ask about it, and they would go to the principal, more than likely the school, then they would go to Brooke or somebody under Brooke, and then if they're still not satisfied with whatever we're talking about, and it would ultimately rest on our shoulders. Right. To make that there, there's an yes. appeal. That's the that it was going to rest on our shoulders. Yeah. It does. It, it it's does. just that's the way everything's written. Yeah, so yeah, every good to have to know it because yeah. oh, everything's yeah. written. Though. It's VSBA. It's, it's yeah. Vermont School Board Association does all these. So they're all pretty much the same in all the schools. You know what I mean? So. I just think we yeah. ought to have that. We do, we do. Thanks, Rick. Is there any other discussion about policy D31? All right, the motion on the floor is to avoid that. Uh, all those in favor, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Right, yep, that's all. Thanks. What about F27 and C9 are both being adopted? Oh, yeah, they should be. Yeah. yeah. So I make a motion to adopt, adopt policy F27, communicable disease mitigation measures for students and staff. Second. Any questions or discussion on policy F27? Hearing nothing, all those in favor of adopting, please say aye. Aye. Make a motion to adopt policy C9, Federal Child Nutrition Act Wellness. Second. Questions or discussion on policy C9? All right, hearing nothing, all those in favor of adopting that policy, please say aye. 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 One opposed? So, Tanya, your last note was to just uh, encouraging the board to read uh, policy D31 for, for further discussion if needed and, and adopting that at the next meeting, right? Yeah, that'd be great. Anything else? All right, thank you very much, Tanya, and the policy committee. Good time. Thanks. A lot of people on this agenda, is there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
All right, the contract list resignation. All right, so I have it. Um, I make the motion to accept the letters of intent. Can I do them all in one? Sure. Yeah. Letters of intent from Courtney Donovan, special education teacher, grade, grade school, $59,627. Amy DeSantis, fifth and sixth grade teacher, Catholic Elementary School, four to $59,448 annually. Megan Mead, elementary teacher, Fairhaven Grade School, $62,142 annually. Morgan O'Dell, elementary teacher, Fairhaven Grade School, $44,900 annually. Okay. Questions or discussion? Um, I'm just curious, is there a, a age to any of these? Uh, Leaving other districts, are they people moving from out of state? Are they ready to be here? Is there anything you want to highlight about any of the, the, the folks that are coming in? Yeah. Um, some of them are moving from other Vermont districts, but um, one is a recent graduate who's doing some long term sub for us, or will be a recent graduate, who's actually doing a long term sub for us when she's student teaching um, right now. Um, and one of these um, individuals is from out of state moving to Vermont. So there, there's a variety. Your questions about the new uh, professionals, letters of intent? All right, all those in favor of approving those four letters of intent, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, so I make a motion to accept the resignation of Karen Abbott, special education teacher who declined her letter of intent. I guess we should do this all. She oh, she is relocating. Okay. Yep, yeah, that is okay. Okay. You have to do them. Second. 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 All right. Any discussion about Aaron Abbott letter of intent decline? Thank you. No other questions. All those in favor of accepting or approving that uh, finding a letter of intent, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Okay. I make a motion to accept the um, accept the resignation of Peggy McLennan, interventionist teacher, um, letter of intent decline. Second. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the debate, please say aye. Uh -huh. Okay. Opposed? He's never voted up letters. Um, the, make a motion to accept the resignation of Abriana Wood, school based clinician. Second. Question for discussion. I do just have a question. So, this is a this is a paid for it through local. It's, it's not the police clinician oh. through local. No, no, it's a paid for it. After. Yeah, but it's out of the yeah. yeah. Any other questions about the resignation of Adriana Wood? Or no? Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 All right, hearing nothing further, all those in favor of accepting, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I made a motion to accept the resignation of Michelle Billiou, school based commission, Catholic College. Second. Questions or discussion? All those in favor of accepting the resignation, please say aye. Aye. Make a motion. Make a motion to accept the resignation for Jacqueline Countryman for Great Teacher Great Grade School. Second. Questions on the resignation of Jacqueline Countryman? Hearing nothing. All those in favor of accepting the resignation, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Make a motion to accept the resignation from Lauren Keith, third grade teacher for his grade school. Second. Second. Questions or discussion? All those in favor of accepting, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Right. So, current status check on the coming teachers. Um, I believe. For um, the professional staff, we have 20, we have 23 leaving um, so far this year. Um, I, I'd have to count up how many new hires we've been able to hire so far, but we have we have quite a few still open positions. Um, instructional assistants, we have quite um, 
a huge number of vacancies in that area. I mean, just maybe 15. In excess right? of 15. Yeah. Do yeah. we still get ripped every year? Depending no. Upon no. 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 We still have vacancies from this year. We're trying we to, fill. Able to fill. <laughs> um, so yeah, we have an excess with the retirements and folks that are, some folks moving on to pursue higher ed, some doing some internships. So there, some of them are, are leaving for good reasons, um, for sure, but um, it does leave a significant void as with many of our neighboring districts. Districts. So if you know of any folks, either an associate's degree is required or uh, they can take a local assessment and we use the para crowd. And if they meet the, the criteria scores that have been set, um, then they can work uh, with students directly within the schools as well. So we're definitely uh, interested in seeing some applications. We have ads out on School Spring and in the newspaper. If anybody is interested, you can give me a call at Central Office and we'll certainly uh, get you pointed in the right direction. <laughs> can you just match them by based on fit? <clears throat> yeah, we would look at where we currently have openings and then look at their skill sets and what additional training folks may need and would be prepared to provide that support and training for them to be able to work with them. We also have an opening in the business office since our last meeting. Well, uh, Paula Danforth is moving on, uh, I think May 13th. So, yeah, so some of, you know, so, so some of these positions are current. So we're probably around 40 right now, which is higher than last year. Um, but it's also in line with many of the districts around and that kind of a huge it's a national problem. It depends on their degree, if they have a degree experience, but this year, like starting no experience, no degree, 15, 15 hour. How many hours do you need to work to qualify for full medical benefits? Threshold. All right, any other questions related to staffing issues? Okay, uh, moving on to other business. Um, well, as I had mentioned, we will need a brief executive session uh, for the submittal. And um, I would invite um, Brooke and um, also Walter to, to stay um, to make a motion. Make a motion related to executive session for personnel. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.